Hello everybody and welcome back to Insider's Guide. Today we're discussing a ski resort that is very near and dear to me, Purgatory. Purgatory is where I learned to ski, and although it is not a huge mountain, it is still one of my personal favorites. I'll get into why in both this and the following part of this episode. So with that, let's begin an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Purgatory. There are two main faces of Purgatory, although they're really more around the corner from each other than directly on opposite sides. Today we're discussing the front side, and after this you can go watch part B all about the back side. To start, let's discuss grooming. Purgatory is very traditional in that almost every green and blue is groomed and everything else isn't. However, there are, as always, exceptions, which I'll be sure to note. Purgatory can have very hit and miss snow, and at least in my experience, it seems to be more extreme than at other resorts. Purgy will get a foot of snow and then nothing for three weeks after that and then another foot. As such, tree and mogul skiing is only good for a few days at a time, after which they become very hazardous with lots of brush and such poking up through the snow. I'll discuss the most grievous offenders as we go through these insider's guides. Below the base area here are the Columbine and Graduate Triples, which are a great place to brush up on your skills if you're a lower level skier before you head up on the main mountain. They're pretty much your traditional bunny hill, so there's not a ton to discuss here. The snow can get quite slushy down here, and the tunnel under the road right here can be hazardous from time to time, so be careful. Out of the main base, you'll have either two or three options. For a while, Needle's Chair 6 very rarely ran, but it runs a lot more frequently now. Of these three lifts, only Chair 1, the Purgatory Village Express lift, gets long lines. But let me tell you, when Chair 1 gets long lines, I mean long lines, and I'm talking Breckworthy. Of course, I've only experienced those lines twice, and both were on New Year's Eve. When those lines happen, however, you're kinda screwed. You can take the Twilight Lift or the Needles Lift out, but they're both excruciatingly slow. My recommendation when one is busy would be 4, as then you can head to less busy areas of the backside, namely Chairs 5 and 8, which we'll discuss in Part B. Chair 4 primarily serves a bunch of green roads down around here. They're always quite empty and nice, and my favorite of them all is Divinity. Lil Toot is a nice short drop-off that can be lapped via the mid-station. It's a little less busy than the couple other double blacks in the resort, and it's also less difficult. Let me make one thing clear. Purgatory is not a beginner mountain. However, if you are a true beginner, Chair 4 is going to be your haven. Also located within the Twilight Pod is what I consider to be the worst run in all of Purgatory, Demon. Try to avoid Demon at all costs, especially at the end of the day, as it is the main thoroughfare for about 80% of people returning to the base. I would highly, highly recommend taking Bank or Divinity down to the Twilight Midstation here, and then Yellow Brick Road across here to Lower Pandemonium, or just taking Lower Divinity all the way down. Engineer is my favorite lift on the front side. Chair 2 is a bit of a long ride, but it never has long lines, which is really nice. It serves a relatively easy blue groomer pod that I find to be a nice alternative to the much busier Hermosa Park pod, which will be discussed in part B. This is one of few places anywhere you'll hear this from me, but I actually like the main run in the pod the most. West Fork is super wide, so you can take it nice and slow, or you can get some good speed on it. If you choose Saw Psyche or Bank and are looking to come back to Engineer, be prepared for a pretty steep icy face down El Diablo, or one of the infamous purgatory traverses to get around. What goes right down a natural goalie, so it's got high sides and is quite a playful trail. These four runs, just lookers left of what here, are all new within the past couple of years and are still somewhat hidden, so I like them to escape the bustle of the busy area right around the Powder House. Speaking of which, the Powder House is a really nice place to stop and get lunch. I would recommend Dante's, which we'll discuss in Part B over the Powder House, but I would recommend either of the on-mountain restaurants much sooner than the restaurants in the village at the base, as that area tends to be much busier. Mercy is the most popular green in the whole of Purgatory. It is also one of the very few greens at Purgy that is not a road. Because it's so popular, I much prefer Saw's Psyche to avoid the crowds. If you're a true green skier, I would say that the upper part of West Fork is mellow enough that you can take just that section before jumping over to Saw's via Walk-A-Lot. Looking at the trail map, you can see this pretty well, but while the top of 1 and 2 are really close to each other, the tops of 1 and 6 are not. This means if you're coming off of 1 and looking to access anything past Paradise, you're going to be hiking across the summit for a bit. 
This also means you can't really access Chair 2's pod from Chair 6, but if your goal is to lap Chair 2, I would highly recommend taking Chair 4, Twilight, out of the base instead of waiting in line for 1. Exodus, Paradise, and Hades are all really nice, wide, classic blue cruisers. Lapping Paradise and Exodus to the Chair 6 midstation is one of my favorite things to do late in the afternoon when the sun's out and everybody's already headed back to the base. Yes, these runs do get somewhat icy, but I find it perfectly manageable, especially compared to runs like El Diablo, Demon, and the Lower Hermosa Park pod. The Chair 6 midstation used to be the gateway to lapping the Paradise Park, but alas, somebody thought it wiser to get rid of that park. Instead, all of the parks are now in the Engineer pod, which led both to a decrease in Chair 6 usage and an increase in Chair 2 skiers. Nothing major enough to make an impact on my advice, but enough to be noticeable. And all of you OG Pergy skiers should understand why I'm not particularly pleased that Pergy got rid of Paradise Park. To exit from these blue groomers, you'll either continue onto some ungroomed runs, or you'll take Cherub across here. Cherub is just a road, which is why I much prefer to get a nice little quad workout on the blacks. However, these frontside mogul runs, all of these blacks and double blacks, are very high traffic and get skied off very early. It's rare that you'll ski a mogul run on the front side without encountering some major brush or rocks poking up through the snow. I would recommend the backside for more advanced skiers and riders. Lower Hades is the biggest offender, but Pandemonium, or Pando for short, and Catharsis can get pretty bad too. Styx is my favorite of all these runs just because it's so long, and it tends to be just a little bit quieter. Ambassador's Glade, way over here, practically in the Chair 2 pod, has some hidden features in there that I'll leave you all guessing about. While I will tell you guys a lot of locals' knowledge, I'm not going to tell you the secrets of Ambassador's Glade to preserve it for the diehard Pergy locals. It's overall one of the better tree skiing areas at a mountain that really sucks overall in the category of glades. These four runs over here are all extreme. Never mind that two of them are patrolled and only rated double black. They are extreme. If you haven't skied at areas like Silverton, Crested Butte, or Aspen Highlands, then these four runs might be the steepest runs you've ever skied. But they're so incredibly fun, and the shuttle really is a bonus. At most ski areas, the extreme terrain requires hiking at the top and or bottom. All you experienced skiers, give those runs a try, but only if the snow is alright on the other frontside blacks first. Well, that about wraps it up for the frontside of Purgatory. Go watch part B, where we finish Purgatory by discussing the other half of the resort, the backside. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.